this is before COVID when I heard about these virtual kitchens and I was like, this is a genius idea. Um, and then, but it was something that people were doing in like Toronto and Calgary and the big cities. And so now you guys have brought this concept to Fort McMurray. It's a crazy, awesome, it's just an efficient concept. So can you explain to some of the people at home who might not know what that is? Like, what is the virtual concept? Yes, of course. Well, it's, you're right. It was starting in all the big cities and I'm originally from Toronto. Yeah. Um, and it excited me to know that there was an area, basically a commissary, mm -hmm. where multiple um, concepts were being launched out of. Right. And from a business perspective, it's very enticing because it really keeps your overhead down. Mm -hmm. And um, it allows you to have multiple offerings for the community. Right. So when we, we kind of dabbled with the idea, but didn't really, it wasn't at the forefront of what we were doing. Mm -hmm. So basically things happened with uh, our very interesting times in our world and we needed to create something to keep our staff employed. Mm -hmm. And um, that was really important to us. Um, so we thought, let's go test this out. So we basically came up with, um, first concept was pork and bones. Okay. Um, which is barbecue, and it is directly through um, third-party delivery. Okay. Um, or if you order direct from us, um, either on our Facebook page, or you can call it in, whatever you like. Right. And it just gives people a different offering. And then, you know, they can, they can have an opportunity to try something new and support local. Right. Um, and because we launched these two concepts, it actually not only al allowed us to maintain our staff, right. but we were able to create more work for other local people here in Fort Mac. And that for us was sort of superseded what we originally wanted to do. Right, right. So we were pretty stoked about that. Nice. Now explain the two different menus that these uh, establishments have. Absolutely. So Pork and Bones, as I had mentioned, is a barbecue concept. So um, there's no other small local business doing that. Right. So we thought, let's do something different than yeah. what other small local businesses are doing here. Right. We didn't want to have competition with anyone else. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to create another entity for the consumers. Yeah. And then the other one is Saver, which actually currently um, we are tweaking. Um, there is something big coming with Saver. Okay. But if you are someone who has tried the Saver concept, it was more global cuisine. Okay. And so it gave offerings from kind of all over. Um, and that was also something that small local wasn't doing. Right. So um, to be continued, but there's something really cool coming with Saver. Okay. So we're excited to share that with you guys. Okay. And then you guys did something else, which I think I, I like companies and individuals who try different things just to diversify. And you guys did something really neat with your um, the beer that you make. Uh, it's not there anymore because I think we <laughs> I think we drank it. Um, we used to have a tumbler, um, but you guys are not only making the beer for us here in Fort McMurray, but you guys are distributing it, and you can get it in different places now, which is like amazing. Honestly, it was such a vision we casted um, going into this because we opened up just before the pandemic hit a few yeah. months before. And brewery was something very new to us, but right. we knew we could create this incredible culture, not only for Fort McMurray, but for Alberta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we had all these ideas creating and to create, and now they're coming to fruition. Um, as you can hear my voice, I'm super giddy about it. Yeah. Um, because not only are we creating these amazing craft beers, and we are actually pairing with really beautiful organizations to mm -hmm. help them raise money for different foundations. And that yeah. really, when I think about who we are yeah. and all the diversity, um, I think about giving back to the community. That right. for me is like top <coughs> shelf important. Yeah. And this is really allowing us to do that. Yeah. Which it's, is really cool. It's really neat that people can... Uh, taste something that comes out of Fort McMurray outside of Fort McMurray. And we had a gentleman on the show um, a few days ago. Uh, I forget the gentleman. Keith. Keith was his name. Yes. He is a big beer drinker. And he couldn't stop bragging about how good the beer is. That so is amazing. 
Yeah, thing. so he was saying like he gets uh, keg from you guys almost on a monthly basis, and love it. He uh, he's a big supporter, and he tells as many people as he can like, hey, listen, Thank you me. need to try this out. So <laughs> That's yeah, amazing. yeah, man. so very cool. Now you were saying you like to give back, and there's a website and a new initiative that you guys are pushing. What's that? Oh, this is like so many beautiful things are coming. Um, loving on local. Yeah. Fifty Seven North has just launched that last week. And I remember it clear as day being in the living room at home talking about, because at this point we had already um, started working with the Heroes Up Foundation and created the Code Red mm -hmm. uh, Heroic Ale. And we were already in the works of creating other beers with other um, foundations and organizations. But I wanted something more. I said to my okay. husband, I really, well, we wanted something more to really give back to small businesses, right. small local businesses. So this includes, um, you know, people who are now starting businesses from home, um, organizations that are already here that really need the help mm -hmm. because, they, because they've lost a lot of their funding, local artists, musicians, the list goes on. And even those in the social network marketing arena, I'm okay. actually one of those people right. as well. I have a health and wellness business and just creating a space for them to grow. Right. And there really is room at the table for everyone to grow. And that's what this initiative is about. Right. Loving on one another, um, supporting one another, growing together as a small business community. Right. So right. that is really at the forefront of what Loving on Local is all about. And how can people get involved with the concept oh or like in yes. the ecosystem that you've created for Loving on yes. Local? Yes, thank you for asking that. So um, this week, actually, last week when we started um, our feature, so we change it every two weeks. Okay. Uh, we have Chantelle Davidson, who is a local artist yes. and a very dear friend. Um, she's first up and we're featuring her, talking about her. And you can find the information. You can, one, reach out to me directly. Yeah. Um, find me, Anita Parker, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can also go to our website at 57 North. We have a whole section on Loving on Local. You can send us an email through there. Okay. And we would love to um, connect with you. Since we launched Loving on Local, we've had a lot of small businesses already yeah. that have asked to do collaborations with us. Oh, that's great. Um, even being at the farmer's market with 57 North, um, they're talking about collaborations, and then I let them know about Loving on Local. So it's a win for all of us. Yeah. So, yeah, so we basically cross-promote with them. We promote them. We don't ask. We're not looking for money. Right. We are only looking to help them the awareness of what they're doing and grow them. And we have these really cool five by seven cards, mm -hmm. um, poster cards that are going on our uh, takeout bags. So we have probably about five to 700 takeout bags going out a week. So yeah. it's advertising about them. Nice. And um, just really helping the initiative grow. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it's exciting. Now you mentioned something earlier in the show. You're from Toronto? I am from Toronto. What, what part of Toronto? <laughs> well, I will be really more specific because it's always easier to say to Toronto to right. people. Yeah, yeah. So if we want to get to the nitty gritty, I was born in Hamilton, Ontario. Okay. Hi, cats. Okay. Uh, grew up in Stony Creek, which is right beside Hamilton. Okay. And then moved to Etobicoke, which is considered Toronto now. Okay. And I've been in the western part of Canada now for almost 16 years. 16 years? Yes. Ooh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I love Toronto. Me too. I, um, my parents are immigrants, um, and they migrated in the seventies to, uh, immigrated, sorry, to the, to Canada in the seventies. And they spent a few years in Toronto. Um, but most of my family that lives in Canada anyways, um, lives in Toronto. So I used to go there pretty much every summer as a child. And, uh, I love Toronto. You know, I know it's busy and it's the hustle and bustle, but I love the culture. Yeah. Like, I am just being immersed in that. Yeah. The feeling of that, growing up with that, has really given me the roots, I think, to be so diverse. Yeah. And be yeah. a person who is a cliff jumper who goes to try everything <laughs> once. That's right. That's awesome. So. Yeah, the one thing I like about Toronto, although it's a, a, a city, a metropolis for that matter, um, once you get into the neighborhoods, though, it doesn't feel like a city. Like if you're in downtown Toronto, yes, mm -hmm. obviously. 
And as soon as you hit the 401, you know you're, you're in a pretty <laughs> big place. But when you're in your neighborhood, it does a great job of making it feel like a neighborhood in a city. Honestly, it really does. Um, the neighborhood that we were in just before we came out here, oh my gosh, it was like a very mature area. Mm -hmm. It really had a lot of heritage homes. It just had a real beautiful sense of community and yeah. watching out for one another. Right. And that's a beautiful thing. And yeah. most people, when they think of Toronto, they f they think of disconnection. Right. Which is actually the exact op and it opposite, pardon me. It's yeah. very connected. Yeah, it yeah. really is. It's... It's an amazing city and like not all cities are like that. Like it's, yeah, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a Canadian city. Like you get like just Canadians are nice. Canadians and I, are. I just find when you go to Toronto, Canadians are just nice. Absolutely. So now you have a home business and you're nice and I find your, <laughs> your business is about positivity and niceness and like you do these cute videos and stories online about you making stuff or like even... I saw you cooking in an air popper for Andy and he came in, you fed him. And I was like, oh my God, that's the most adorable thing I've ever seen. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh my gosh. It's called air, air frying with the Parkers. Yeah. Um, you know, I, my heritage is Italian. My parents both immigrated from Italy. So food is how we love. It's right. one of our love languages. Yeah. And um, Andy obviously being in that um, Lego work for... <laughs> Um, all these years has really resonated. We have a lot of fun in the kitchen and yeah. an air fryer is not what you would think about when you think of Italian cuisine. <laughs> right, right. But we're obsessed with our air fryer, air fryers. Okay, plural. more than one plural? <laughs> okay. A couple different kinds. <laughs> um, and just like really honestly demonstrating for our kids the importance of having really delicious food yeah. and nourishing our bodies in a way that's going to obviously serve us from a physical and a mental standpoint. So I've just made it into something super fun. Okay. And yeah, my health and wellness business is very much about a holistic approach to mindset, to like movements such as exercise and to what we're putting in and on our bodies basically. Right. So it's very empowering. I didn't know going into that business, the self development that would come from it. And right. it's been like really mind blowing and what my children watching and my husband and friends and like yourself saying, hey, it's like, it's, I just want to share yeah. um, good things with people. Yeah. Well, when I follow you and I look at the, the content that you put out, more often than not, I have no idea what you're actually selling. <laughs> like, because I don't feel like that's the main objective of what you're putting out there. Um, and I think that's the way that social media should be. Yeah. You put some stuff out there, like you engage with you as an individual. And then every once in a while, it's like, hey, by the way, there's this product or you're watching, you make something and then you're like, Oh, I wonder what that product is. But for the most part, it's just like, it's just entertaining, entertaining and it's fun to watch. Well, so thank you. Yeah, I really, really cool. I really appreciate that. Thank you yeah, so much. No problem. <laughs> so I know I just got a sign from Tanner. I'm stealing his shine. He has a segment in the show called oh. the max city minute. Okay. He's going to ask you five questions. I have no idea what he's going to ask you. So uh, best of luck to you, Tanner hit her with the max city okay. minute. Okay. Question number one, what is your favorite part of working with local businesses in Fort McMurray? Oh, such a great question. For those that don't know me, I honestly vibrate on connecting with people. That for me is like such a beautiful feeling of really understanding who the individual is and being a really generous listener mm. to what their human needs are. So that is probably the biggest piece for me. Question number two, what is one thing about Fort McMurray that keeps you coming back? Oh my gosh, I'll never forget the first time I came to Fort Mac and thinking about what a hidden secret this place was. Mm -hmm. and it was my duty to share that with everybody. And I yeah. still feel that way. Yeah. It's a big reason why I'm doing the Loving on Local. The people here, you, yeah. um, Tana, <laughs> wow, you have my heart. Like you, the love that is in this community is what keeps me coming back because I want to be a part of growing that love. Question number three, what is your favorite dish from each of the restaurants and concepts you work with? Oh, good Tanner's, question, Tanner. Tanner's on it. <laughs> okay, so from 57 North, 
I would say, honestly, the best wings. Um, the best wings. And wow, <laughs> they're amazing. Uh, from Pork and Bones, I would say the nachos are okay. like layered nachos. You can find everything with on that nacho chip with every bite. And from Savor, it would be, I would say, the penne with um, sausage and prawns. I'm actually juggling by, I'm juggling between two other uh, dishes, but yeah, that one would be my favorite. Mm. Okay. And there's gluten-free options with all, so it's, it's really cool for those that are, you know, gluten intolerant, so... And your final question, what is wh one way Fort McMurray reminds you of Toronto or other big cities in Canada that you've been to? Tanner, you impressed me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was shocked to see the diversity here. When I came to Fort McMurray, I felt like I was coming back to Toronto. Mm -hmm. It was so beautiful to see all the different cultures that are here. And, um, yeah, it just reminded me of home. It felt so good. Yeah. And those have been your five questions. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. People, like uh, myself and Tanner, we grew up here, so you kind of take it for granted. But I remember when I moved away from Fort McMurray, I went to post-secondary in Edmonton. And not as diverse as Fort McMurray. Um, and when I say that, I, like, I know there's a lot of diversity in Edmonton. However, in Fort McMurray, everybody hung out with one another. I found when I moved to Edmonton, it was a, it was a culture shock for me because it was very clicky. Like, um, Guyanese, that's where my parents are from. Mm -hmm. Guyanese people hung out with Guyanese people. Asian people hung out with Asian people. And it was very, you, you stayed within your lane kind of deal. And growing up in Fort Mac, it was just like, you just hung out with everybody because that's just what you did. Um, I think it's because there wasn't a lot of people, but super diverse um, and it just continues to, to continue to go in that direction here. Yeah, it's a really beautiful thing. And you said yeah. it like, I, I live in other, I've lived in other parts of Western Canada and that's what I found. Like it was a culture shock. Yeah. Being so clicky, it was just so not part of like where I came from. That's so right. that's that really beautiful sense of Fort McMurray is yeah. everyone just comes together. Yeah. Yeah. So you obviously like food. So I'm going <laughs> to go down this rabbit hole with you. Okay. So you have your place, and that's great. Yes. And I, I, but I know you support a lot of other places sure in do. town because that's kind of where I bump into you more often than not is different restaurants <laughs> other from your own. So let's go into fast food for a second. What's your favorite fast food place to go to? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, We had Jeremy. He was saying A&W. Is yes. A&W yours, or do you got McDonald's, Burger King? What are you thinking? Do you want to know what? Growing up, we didn't have fast food. Coming from, mm. like, um, an Italian family, it wasn't, we ate at home. My mom is right. still like that to this day. Mm -hmm. um, so when I think about when I was a teenager, like, yeah. branching out and, like, oh, my gosh, give me the pop and the candy and the fast food. Honestly, back in the day, it was Taco Bell for their <sighs> chili cheese burrito. Like, especially after the high school dances. That's nice. <laughs> I don't nice. know. I've got a preference more to taco time than oh. Bell. But well, anywhere with a taco is good. Yeah. Here's the thing about Fort McMurray. We never had a Taco Bell for years okay. until like the 2000s. We finally got one like the up 2010s. in uh, Timberley. Yeah. And so as a kid, I used to like love going to Edmonton so I could go to Taco Bell. Love Taco Bell. But Taco Time's good too, Tanner. I'm not going to bash Taco Time. We didn't have Taco Time out east. Yeah. So, um, and the Fry Supreme was the other oh. thing. I haven't had Taco Bell, honestly, since I was in post-secondary. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, there you go. You're missing <laughs> out. Taco Bell, the Gordita Crunch, Fry Supreme, so good. Love it. Anyways, um, we're done. That's it. I know we went over the time. So, thank you very much for coming. Do appreciate it. Before you leave, though, please, shameless plug, tell everybody at home about everything that you have going on and how they can support and get involved. Okay, well, thank you for having me. And yes, please check out 57 North's website. You can find out all about the Loving on Local. Please reach out um, by Facebook Messenger, Instagram. We're also on Instagram, 57 North, Saver, and also Pork and Bones. 
And Anita Parker, you can find me on social media. I'd love to connect with you. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Well, on that note, Fort McMurray, Wood Buffalo, and the rest of the world, that's been another episode of the Max City Morning Show. Thank you very much for tuning in. I've been your host, Elliot Pierre. And once again, thank you, thank you, thank you. It does mean the world to me. So have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. I just died at this. That's another Max City Morning Show done. Talk about quenching your ugly thirst. Really?